Look at all these shrimps. Well, uh, here we are at the desert tank. We should probably be calling it the string algae tank. It's probably a better name for it, but regardless of that, it has turned into a shrimp breeding factory for me. There are hundreds upon hundreds, if not maybe even like a thousand of these black neo shrimp in here. And so we're gonna be primarily talking about that today because I know a lot of people get shrimp for the first time and they don't have success with them, but it's actually really simple and I wanna give you guys all the pointers that I could possibly give you to be successful with shrimp and end up with tons of them. But I think before we start talking about that, guys, we need to do something with this aquarium. We need to clean it up. It's it's crazy, okay? And I'll explain why I let it get this way. I mean, it wasn't just because I was lazy, all right? I mean, that's, that's mostly the reason why. But we should at least clean it up a little bit before we stare at it and talk about shrimp for the next five or ten minutes. To work on this tank, we're going to be primarily using a toothbrush to get rid of this string algae. You'll see how effective this is in just a second. But we're also going to be using some of these spring scissors that I got recently. Now it's not very often that I get my hands on a product that I haven't used before and absolutely love. Like I love these scissors. Like these, these things are awesome. Okay, and I'm going to tell you why. Let's see if we can find right here, yeah. So these are typical aquascaping scissors that you see. They have the curved blades on them, but they're really long, okay, which you'd think would be a good idea. You can kind of reach stuff easier maybe, and that's, that's true, but it really just comes down to the amount of time you have to spend using these scissors doing this, holding them in your fingers. They just, they suck compared to these. Like... They, that, that, that's the only way to put it. These things, like you will see in a minute, are just way better. They're way more comfortable, they're easier to use, your fingers don't get tired, and obviously this isn't the best thing to use on the algae, but when we get in here and we trim the moss on the cactus, I mean, we're just gonna go to town and it's gonna be super, super easy. So these things right here, they are a little spendy, they're like 20 bucks, they're stainless steel. I just found some random listing on Amazon. They don't necessarily have like a specific brand name or anything. There's a couple different listings, but I'll throw the exact ones that I got in the description so you can check them out and maybe get some if, if you're interested in that. If you have a plant tank, if you're trimming a lot, these things are gold. Anyway, guys, let's go ahead and let's clean this tank up a little bit. about halfway through on our water change guys I also did a little bit of trimming here on the plants as you saw I might do a little bit more in the back but we're doing a pretty good job so far I think the tank is gonna turn out looking pretty good look at this ginormous ball of algae that I pulled out of this thing so far that's crazy whoops we don't want that going on with the siphoning I was doing trying to remove as much of the hair algae down at the substrate level as possible I definitely ended up getting more than a few shrimp into this bucket, so we'll let things settle out here and then we'll try and net out as many as we can, but it's just impossible when you have this many shrimp in a tank to not suck them up. You just have to do your best. 
I'm feeling pretty optimistic about the scape. I don't want to just get rid of it quite yet. I want to explore kind of messing around with some additional rocks down here that match the scape to try and get it back to something that I'm happy with that I enjoy looking at. This has always been a special aquarium to me and I want to try and keep it for as long as possible. Look at all these shrimps. They're just dogpiling in there. I threw in some food and they're just going crazy for it. I think everybody's over here. There's probably some stragglers. Yeah, they haven't they haven't figured it out yet, but they'll be over here very soon to hang out with their buddies and get some food. But they are loving the water change, guys. Uh, the water's still a little cloudy, you know? It doesn't look super great or anything. I did put the cacti back in here. I wasn't sure if I was gonna do it just because they kind of still have some algae on them, and I, I have a feeling that they are one of the main sources of that big bloom of the string algae, but we also added in a couple extra rocks and whatnot in here. I don't know how I really feel about the scape. I mean, I've been kind of looking at the same thing for a long time now, and I would like a change, but I don't have a ton of other materials to add, so I don't know. We'll, we'll see if we can fight the algae and maintain a more balanced aquarium here for a while, and if we can't, then, then we'll kind of float the idea of maybe changing this tank up, but I just, I really like this aquarium. I don't want to have to change it. I promise that we're going to get to talking about the shrimp. I know if you, if you came here for this video looking for the breeding information and how to keep your shrimp, we are going to get to it, I promise, but for those that are regular viewers, you know, I got to give you the full update here. So, uh, you know, had to clean out the filter. It was pretty much not moving at all. There were some shrimp down there that we saved. Got the lily pipes kind of cleaned out here. I'm really loving this setup. You can't really see it at all. Um, got everything cleaned out. This is something we will touch on with the shrimp keeping, but we have a uh, intake sponge over there on our intake just to prevent anybody from floating up there in the past. Um, that had fallen off and I wasn't good about getting it replaced, so I was just relying on the um, vegetative material, the plants, the dead leaves and stuff, blocking that. So no more of that, that's rookie stuff. Now we got everything 100% back to normal and looking good. Okay guys, let's talk about keeping shrimp and how to get them breeding like crazy. Lots of new shrimp keepers have problems with this. I know I did when I started to keep them. So first off, you wanna make sure that your water parameters are ideal for them. These Neocaridina shrimp aren't as sensitive to water parameters as their cousins, the Caridina shrimp, but you still wanna make sure you have them in water that is conducive to them being happy and healthy. If they're not, then they definitely aren't going to breed as much or as frequent as you want them to. So a good set of parameters are as follows. A pH that's as close to 7 as possible, but definitely in the range of 6.5 to 7.5 has been really good in my experience. A GH between 4 and 8, and your KH can be anywhere from 2 to 15. Some of these have super wide ranges, but the take home message here is consistency. As long as your main parameters stay the same, you should have an easy time keeping these guys healthy while promoting them to breed. An example of how you can mess up this consistency is adding too much CO2 to your tank and thus creating too much of a shift in pH between night and day. This is something that I've done in the past without realizing it, and not only did my shrimp not breed, many of them died as a result. Consistency always wins and not just with shrimp keeping. So I always recommend to new shrimp keepers, go with a low tech tank and keep things simple to avoid these problems. If you need to adjust your water parameters, here are a few tips, because I know not everybody has the ideal situation. If you need to soften your water, you can use an active substrate like Brightwell soil and or you can cut your water with RO water. If you need to add hardness like I do, I like using the Shrimp Mineral GH and KH Booster. Just make sure that you're staying consistent and adding the correct amount each time when you do your water changes. Now let's talk about temperature because while it's definitely a water parameter, I like to keep it separate and here's why. These shrimp will behave differently in colder versus warmer water, like with most organisms, but there's definitely a strategy here. Colder temps like 68 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit are great for longevity, but it will also result in slower shrimp growth as well as the rate at which they're gonna breed. 
So if breeding is your goal, then you can raise your temperature up to more of a normal temperature like 76 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit and you'll most likely see a big difference. When you first get shrimp in, I would recommend keeping them somewhere in the middle, like 72, 73, and that way you can hopefully get them adjusted to your tank fairly quickly. Another important thing is making sure you get quality shrimp, make sure that they're mature and already at a breeding age if that's your goal. On top of this, the more shrimp you can start a colony with, the better. If you start with five shrimp, it's gonna take a lot longer to get a large colony going versus if you would have gotten your hands on like 20 of them. So keep that in mind. You guys know if you've watched the channel for a while, I get my shrimp from flipaquatics.com. They're a sponsor of the channel, but I wouldn't work with them if I thought the quality wasn't there. So check out the links in the description if you're looking for a new source of shrimp. As far as feeding goes, I really just try and not overcomplicate it. I typically use this Shrimp King Complete Food. It's got everything that the shrimp need to grow and be happy and healthy. So I feed one pellet per day, even in this giant tank, when I'm really wanting them to grow and breed quickly. Now you don't need to feed every day. If you have a lot of shrimp, you certainly can do that, but it's not even really required because ideally you're gonna have a tank that has a ton of surface area with a ton of bacterial films that your shrimp can be nibbling on throughout the day. Here are a few other tips that aren't 100% required to get your shrimp breeding, but it will definitely help them overall. Cover your filter intakes with some type of sponge. This is gonna prevent small shrimp from getting sucked up and also give them an additional spot to feed on. Relating to this using air driven sponge filters or like a matten filter, it's also a really great idea for shrimp tanks. Not only are they safe, but it provides a much larger area for them to feed on as well. I've opted to not really do that in the desert tank here, but you can tell it's still working out for me. Another thing that seems super obvious but needs to be said is that if you are really focused on breeding and increasing your numbers, keep your shrimp by themselves. Even though there are many small nano fish that can be paired with dwarf shrimp, you always run the risk of those fish picking off the new shrimplets. So just avoid fish altogether if you're breeding focused. So yeah guys, that's pretty much it. Those are my main tips that I wanted to share with you. As you can tell, the tank is looking pretty good now that we got things cleaned out. I mean, it's not perfect. There's still a little bit of algae in here, but we've made some steps in the right direction. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the tips. If there's anything that I left out, drop them down in the comments below. Share your knowledge with other people that are trying to learn more about shrimp. And yeah, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. Like the video if it helped you out. And we'll see you in the next one.